Hello, this is our project cladograms versus phylogenetic trees. We will be explaining what a cladogram and a phylogenetic tree is, then we will show our own cladogram. The eight levels of classification are the domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. If the same species is shared, then the same genus, family, order, class, phylum, kingdom, and domain is shared. If the same genus is shared, then the same family, order, class, phylum, kingdom, and domain is shared, and so on and so forth. And the example species I use is a lion. The domain of the lion is the eukaryota. Kingdom is an animalia. The phylum is chordata. Class is mammalia. Order is carnivora. Family is felidae. Genus is panthera. And species is leo. A cladogram is a diagram that groups items together based on the number of common characteristics. In the data table here, I have a list of characteristics to go with the beetle, cat, and human. On the cladogram, the one with the most characteristics go at the end, and the one with the least go at the, goes at the beginning. The beetle has the least number of characteristics, so it's right here. Therefore, oh, therefore, that's beginning. At this notch, the heterotroph goes here because everyone is a heterotroph. Then at the next notch, we have the four limbs. Cats and humans have four limbs. The, the human only has the thumb, so it goes at the end. A phylogen phylogenetic tree basics. A phylogenetic tree is a diagram that depicts the lines of evolutionary descent of different species, organisms, or genes from a common ancestor. The difference between a phylogenetic tree and a cladogram is that the length of branches in phylogenetic trees represents the time in which a number of character changes from ancestors to new species took place. In a cladogram, branch length has no relevance in time. And as you can see, I made an example um, phylogenetic tree. The shark has a vertebrae. The trout has a bony skeleton and a vertebrae. The salamander has four limbs, bony skeleton and vertebrae. The human has an amniotic egg, four limbs, bony skeleton and vertebrae. And the um, cannery has all five of those things. To create a phylogenetic tree, two sets of data is used, DNA slash RNA sequence and shared structures. So the more shared sequences there are, the closer they will be on, a, on the tree. And the same with the shared structures. This is a character table. A character table includes the species and the characteristics of them. In this table, it isn't as organized as, as it can be. The more organized the table is, the easier it will be to fill out the cladogram or phylogenetic tree. So this one is more organized. As you can see, the species with the least amount of shared characteristics is at the top, and the one with the most shared characteristics are at the bottom. This can be done vice versa. Now when the character table is done, the cladogram can be started. The first one is a prime example of a cladogram with maximum parsimony. Maximum Maximal parsimony is a method in which the phylogenetic tree or cladogram that has the least, the least amount of steps shown to explain a set of data or a character table. These two cladograms aren't preferred over the first because the notches, these things right here, the notches that indicate the shared characteristics, when the notches are above, <laughs> well, the notches are above the branch. That means that that species does not share that characteristic. If it is below, that means it is shared. As you can see, the third cladogram, there are many notches. Every species has each characteristic on the individual branch. And in this case, this one with the least amount of shared characteristics right here is last. So a mutation has to happen
to where the shared characteristics are lost. So once again, the tree is in a great, great representation of maximum parsimony. I thought that I was like, you just stopped it. I don't know why I thought I mixed it.